Hi everyone and welcome to this week's video. This week I wanted to go back into the greenhouse and show you how we're getting on with all of our seed sowing and our plants because it's been a rocky road um, over the last few months and as you'll know if you've watched previous videos and um, we've lost an awful lot of plants um, in December to the big freeze then and then we had another big freeze in January and in the last week we've had another one as well so it has felt like a bit of a roller coaster ride um, this winter but we have got some plants through. So I thought it'd be really interesting to show you what's stage they are at just now and which ones did come through because they are very robust they've survived a very cold winter here in zone 8b in Scotland so it might give you some ideas of what to grow in the future if you're in a climate like I am and we've got off to a good start with some of our seed sowing as well so we'll have a look at what we're doing just now for that and outside the greenhouse I've got the plants hardening off that did come through the winter so we will see what we've got there as well Okay, let's go and have a look over here and see what our plants are doing. So first up over here, we've got Cyanoglossum and this is a hardy annual that I have overwintered. So it's come through those really cold spells. It's got lovely forget-me-not like flowers and it can grow quite tall in the flower patch. It's great as a filler in bouquets, looks really nice. If you've ever grown Cyanoglossum before, you'll probably find that it self seeds really easily all over your garden as well. This is a perennial I've been growing from seed and it's sea lavender, limonium, and it is a fantastic filler flower with these lovely flowers on lots of branching stems. And it is just starting to put on some new growth as well. You can see here, again, it has come through the winter fairly well too. It hasn't done a lot over the winter time. It goes fairly dormant and it puts good roots down, but it's just, just now it's starting to get away with these new leaves coming and it'll put on a lot of growth in the next few weeks. This is white glitter Oryngium that I grew at the very end of August last year and it has survived very well through these freezing cold spells we've had in the winter. And again, it's just starting to put on lots of new growth now. Just like the sea lavender, once it has grown into a bit more of a robust plant, I'll start hardening it off and we'll get it outside to grow. This is my Linaria Canon Wint, which I grew from seed. It is another perennial with lovely spikes on its flowers for adding accents to bouquets. Um, and it hasn't done quite so well over the winter time, but it is just starting to come back now. There's some new growth coming on it, so I'm hoping it'll come away again fine. I think it's just had a bit of a shock at times, um, but there's definitely some new growth coming. So in the next few weeks, I think this will get a lot sturdier. And here's this fabulous Aurelia, which has done really, really well over the winter. And again, you can see all this lovely new growth coming here on the plants. And if you want to find out more about growing Aurelia from seed um, to plant out in your garden for beautiful white flowers this year, then you can have a look at last week's video, which was all about growing Aurelia and everything you ever wanted to know about doing that, including how to get it to germinate, because that can sometimes be a bit tricky, but there's some tips in there for that. And I'm really pleased with the Aurelia. It's come through a lot. So Aurelia is a filler like Amimagus, but I lost all my Amimagus this year in the cold. I didn't lose my Aurelia, so it is slightly more robust. And we've got some Aurelia out in the garden as well that's overwintered in the flower beds too. Over here is another plant that's come through the winter really, really well, and it is Canterbury Bells. And I haven't grown these before as a cut flower, but they're looking really good so far. So I am hoping that we'll get some lovely flowers from these. And these will start getting hardened off in the next couple of weeks and planted out in April in the flower beds. Over here, we've got some Aqualasia white barlow that I grew from seed back in August. It hasn't put on a huge amount of growth over the winter, but it is just starting to get away just now. And these will produce little baby plants this year. Probably won't flower, but we'll toughen them up in the greenhouse, grow them on into bigger plants and get them planted up over the summertime. And then next year, hopefully they'll start giving us some lovely flowers. Over here in the greenhouse, we've got a biennial, which is Sweet William, and this is a white variety. And it was growing on the 16th of June from seed last year. And it's grown away fine over the winter time and it'll be able to get planted out soon as well. Nigella is normally one of the annuals that I can get through the winter really easily, but not this year. We've lost a lot of Nigella in the very, very cold temperatures, but I've got a few left that are putting on some new growth now. Get them to grow into bigger plants and then we'll start hardening them off to get outside for June flowers. So you may remember that I'd sown lots of sweet peas in the autumn to overwinter and then for the first time ever, those minus 15 temperatures meant that I lost the whole lot. So I haven't actually got any through the winter at all this year. 
which is um, very unusual and usually I would have lots that I was hardening off just now to get outside. So the only thing for it was to start sewing new batches. So these little sweet peas, Charlie's Angel, were sewn on the 6th of March and they're starting to come through now. I've popped them into my little half seed tray and I will transplant them into much bigger, deeper pots um, to grow on. They have long roots on them so they like to have a deeper pot to grow down into. And then we'll pinch them out for bushier plants, harden them off and get them outside in the springtime. So I've also got some royal white sweet peas coming. That's just the first one starting to germinate there as well. Once sweet peas like this one have germinated, you want to grow them on in cool conditions because if you keep them in the warmth inside the house or in a heated environment, they'll get very leggy very quickly. And they need a good light source as well so they're not stretching towards the light. You want them to be sturdy little plants if you can. So these are my first batch of sweet peas that I started in the new year. So these were started at the beginning of February and they'll need pinched out soon once they've got a few pairs of true leaves. So we've got blue velvet sweet peas here and we've got some other royal family white ones as well. So Dorcas is another of my absolute favourite fillers that you can use in bouquets and we'll do a video on that this year as well on how to grow it from seed, answering lots of questions you might have about it. These are the ones that I grew on the 15th of August last year from seed and they have been very, very slow through the winter, much slower than the Oralea, but they have survived. They've come through, which is really good. And you can see that there is just new growth starting to come just now on these. So I think in the next couple of weeks with some warmer weather, they're going to get away. Because they're smaller than the Oralea, I'm not going to harden them off yet. I'm going to wait until they're bigger plants to get them outside. These are my little snapdragons. Now these you would think were sown just now, but actually they were sown back in August and they have survived through the winter, but they've stayed very, very small. So hopefully they will start to put on some growth now. So I'm very excited that I have some ranunculus pre-sprouting. If you remember, I had a whole greenhouse full of ranunculus and anemones growing away brilliantly on October, November. Then December, we had a couple of weeks of minus 15 overnight. And unfortunately, I lost the lot apart from two trays. I had decided that I wasn't going to invest any more in ranunculus corms. I had spent a lot on corms last year and I'd lost them. So I was just going to leave it this year and then I got tempted and I'm really glad I did. I just bought a few but I really would like to have some ranunculus again and hopefully these will flower for me in June this year. So I didn't manage to get my Cerinthi through the winter time after that first freeze. It took them out the minus 15 overnight temperatures. So I've started again with some new batches of Cerinthi now and these are just starting to get away. Over here we've got some Rebecca, which I started off in the middle of February and they are just starting to germinate. These are little salvia seedlings and these were sown on the 7th of March. This is now the 15th of March. So they've germinated really well and fairly quickly. So these are Amimandris seedlings and these were sown on the 7th of March and it's now the 15th and they have germinated really quickly. They were really difficult to get through the winter this year. That was really unfortunate because of last year I had some amazing Amimandris that I got through the winter and the biggest flowers I'd ever had, the tallest plants. I was so chuffed with them and then I thought we're going to grow lots of Amimandris to get through this winter and then of course I lost the whole lot um, in that big freeze we had. So um, I've started again. Now these Amimandris won't be as big as any autumn sown that I would have grown but they will still produce lots of lovely flowers. And I think the key with this this year is going to be succession sowing. So if I'm not going to have these really big robust plants from autumn, then I'm going to have to keep repeatedly sowing new ones that will give me smaller flowers, maybe for not as long and as many weeks at a time. So if I just keep up with succession sowing, then I'll have new batches. So just over here, we've got some scabious that have just started to germinate as well. And I've just given the seed tray a bit of a soaking because the soil was quite dry and so it needed um, a bit of water again to help these seeds to germinate and not to dry out. So over here we've got some annual phlox as well. We've got some moody blue, blushing bride and cherry caramel just starting to germinate here. These were sown on the 17th of February, so a month ago, and they do take a while to come through, but I can just start to see them popping up. So we've got some here and then another one just coming through here. So you just have to be a little bit patient with the flocks. 
Under all these humidity domes on my heated propagating bench, we have got lots of Aurelia and Larkspur on at the moment, and those have had their seeds chilled before I sowed the seeds. So for a couple of weeks, they kept very cold, and then I have sowed the seeds and put them on the heated propagating bench, and that difference between the cold and the warmth will hopefully bring them into germination faster. All the seeds that I am sowing just now are hardy annuals and I'm not going to start off my tender annuals until we get into April and we have properly warmed up because it's still very very cold just now. You may be noticing in the greenhouse that the staging looks very empty at the moment so where are all the plants? Well that's because they're outside hardening off and then they are popped back onto the staging here at night time when the temperatures cool down a bit. So here we are outside the greenhouse with all my overwintered plants and they are just having their hardening off period outside for a few hours in the day and then back in the greenhouse overnight. But you might be wondering what on earth I've been doing the last week with them because how can you harden off these plants, get them ready to go outside when we've had minus six temperatures overnight again? What have I been doing? Well, what I decided to do is I didn't want to lose these ones as well. These are the last quarter of the plants that I had um, and they've done really well to get through. So I decided that I would empty the greenhouse to be on the safe side and I would take the plants indoors last week. And what I did was I hardened them off still in the daytime, but then at nighttime I took them back into the house again. This worked really well, the plants all came through alive so they had a period outside in good light and good conditions to harden off in the daytime but they stayed alive from being indoors overnight. And I checked the weather forecast and as soon as the temperatures looked like they were rising overnight everything went back in the greenhouse. The 10 day forecast at the moment does look good and um, we haven't got any temperatures going below about minus one so I think from next week I am going to get things planted out and if the temperatures do dip again unexpectedly then I'm going to cover them in horticultural fleece and they should be fine under there. But it's time to get these hardy annuals out into the ground now. At this time of year there's so much seed sowing and so much potting on that you need all available space in the greenhouse and these plants just have to get outside and make room for the new ones coming in. So these are the two remaining trays of ranunculus and anemones that I did manage to get through the winter time and the rest we all lost unfortunately but this is my little miracle anemone flower, the first one of this year so it's done super well to get through that weather. So this weekend coming is Mother's Day and it's really early this year, it's the 19th of March which is far too early to have any of my cut flowers ready for using for flower arrangements. So what I have been doing is I potted up some bulbs before Christmas time and I've been forcing them indoors so they'll come into flower earlier. So look at these lovely muscari here. They are looking fantastic and we've got some hyacinths behind as well. And we're going to use these to make some lovely spring flowering bulb pots um, for customers to have on the stall this weekend for Mother's Day. You can't beat the scent of hyacinths at this time of year. I think you either love them or you hate them, but I really love them. And I think they're so beautiful, so many different colours with them too. One of the things that you can do at this time of year is you can transplant and divide your snowdrops. So if you've got an area in the garden that you would like your snowdrops to go in future years and look really pretty, then you can go and dig up a clump from an established part of your garden, can separate it out into sections and then replant those smaller sections in their new home. So we'll go and have a look at doing that in the garden just now because I'm trying to develop that area down the front of the lawn that you look onto from the house. And I've started to build it up in the last last year with snowdrops but it definitely could do with a few more. So we've got some really good established clumps down the sides of the garden that you don't see quite so much. So we're going to split some of those up and move them over to this new area. So this is an area of the garden where there are lots and lots of snowdrops which look beautiful and line the edges but I'd like to move some to the middle of the garden and they've just finished flowering just now so this is a very good time to go and transplant them and divide them. The first thing you want to do is to dig up the old sunflowers and I'm using a hori hori knife to do this because I absolutely love it for bulb planting but you can use a trowel that's just as good and you just want to gently dig down right round the clump of snowdrops and it should tease away, you should feel it coming away and then you should be able to lift it out of the soil easily as one big clump just like that. 
So I've just lifted my large clump of snowdrops over to the area in the lawn where I want to plant and you can see here that there's some snowdrops in the lawn already but not very many and there's some blank areas. So this is where we're going to pop them but first of all we need to split them up. We want to split them into smaller sections because these will be rejuvenated and able to flower better in the coming years. So I've managed to split my large clump up into four here. I've still got a decent number of bulbs in each clump ready to plant. So next it's really easy, you just need to take a hori hori knife like I've got here or your trowel and you just need to dig up a bit of turf in your lawn. And I'm only going a couple of inches deep here, maybe even about 10 centimetres. And I can just lift that piece of turf over if you go around on three sides and then any of the loose soil on the bottom I'm just going to move out. And then you've got a nice hole there for your bulbs to go into and you can just insert them straight in making sure the bulbs are deep enough in the ground that um, they're not going to be on the surface. And then you can just use that excess soil to pat round about it and then move the turf back into place. And that's all you need to do if it's very dry weather. You can give them a water to water them in. So I'm just digging up another clump here. Hori Hori knives are really quite sharp and they're really strong tools to use and so they can insert into the turf really easily whereas you might have struggled with just a normal trowel. I found they've made a big difference when doing jobs like this. There we go, there's another batch of bulbs to go in there. Just push the soil back around them and then place the turf back around as well. So it's starting to look really good. I'm gonna keep doing this over the next few days so that we can build up our snowdrops along the front lawn. And what I can do now just to help it out is if there's any faded flower heads like this one here, you can go around with a pair of snips or just pinch with your fingers and take that off. And that will just mean that the bulbs are where the energy is being concentrated on for next year rather than putting energy into the flower head that's faded. And it's nice and damp weather at the moment, it's mild, it's raining, um, so that will give them a good water, keep the ground moist, and these bulbs should get away fine, producing a really good display next year. So if you had that really cold spell in December, you might be really worried about some of your shrubs and plants in the garden. And I know, for example, I've lost things like my hebe. And I also was really worried about my flowering quince. And you can see it here. But this week I got really excited because it is showing signs of life again. It's got its new leaves coming. It's deciduous. So at this time of year, it forms new leaves. And I can see the flowers coming too which is really good. It is absolutely outstanding in my garden in March and April time. And you can see it here last year, it's really lovely. We train it up against the side of the house and it's just so cheerful at that time of year. So really fantastic to see things coming back to life in the garden again, especially with the winter that we've had and the possibility that some things may not come back for us, but this flowering quince is looking great. So we've already talked about my hardy annuals and what I was doing with them last week while we were having these minus six overnight temperatures again. But what has been happening outside in the flower patch? Well, I've largely been leaving it to its own devices. The things that are outside can actually tolerate that amount of cold. And you can see here, it's looking pretty frosty. Here are the corn cockles that have been outside in the frosty weather. And they're uncovered, they're not under fleece, but they've been absolutely fine. They've come through the frosty weather and they're still growing away. Here are the tulips in the garden. Now you might be wondering, is this good for the tulips to get that frosty and go down to that temperature overnight without any coverage? But actually tulips really like a good period of cold. If they're going to flower well for you, they need a good 12 to 16 weeks of really cold temperatures. And so they are absolutely fine outside in the garden there. The flower heads aren't on them yet. It's just the leaves. They're just starting to come up and they will be absolutely fine with that level of cold temperature. And you might get a bit concerned when you come out in the morning and flowers are looking like this. So this is your hellebores after a heavy frost the night before and they're all bent over on their stems and the flower heads are dripping down. You might think that you've lost them, but it's absolutely amazing how resilient hellebores are. They don't mind the cold. They will droop over like that in the frosty weather. But as soon as the temperature rises in the daytime, then a few hours later and they're back to looking like this again. So a really good, tough, hardy, early flower to have in your garden and enjoy. And just look at them looking great a few hours later. 
And here again, a few hours later, you can see the tulips. Not worse for wear at all for having had that frosty spell overnight. I'm looking forward to seeing these flowers very soon. So tomorrow's Friday and I'm all ready now for my garden gate stall for the weekend for Mother's Day on Sunday. And um, we've got lots of lovely potted up bulbs. They've got hyacinths and narcissi and muscari. These have all been grown over the autumn and winter time and forced into flowering indoors, especially for Mother's Day. And we've got some lovely knitted crochet ceramic pots with some muscari and hyacinths in too, my flower cards from photographs that I've taken of flowers in the garden and my sempervivum pots that I have grown from seed. I love sempervivums, they're really cute little plants that are really hardy and robust surviving whatever the weather throws at them and you can grow them indoors or outside in your garden, they look great in rockeries. I'm looking forward to what will hopefully be the first busy weekend of the flower season and hopefully lots of people will get to enjoy some lovely scented flowers for Mother's Day. Thanks so much for watching today's video. It's been great to have a catch up, get everything back in the greenhouse and just to know where I'm at in terms of my seed sowing, what plants I've got and what gaps I'm going to need to fill. In the next couple of weeks, I am hoping that we're going to get some of those hardy annuals planted out now that they're going to be hardened off. And hopefully that is going to be the end of this really cold weather that we've been having. I am ready for spring. I want to get going with proper seed sowing, proper planting out, get some flowers. Um, after a long winter, it really feels like it's time for spring to come out now. So let's hope that that happens and um, we'll be back having a look at the garden in a week or so's time. So if you haven't subscribed to my channel, please do subscribe if you want to keep up to date with the latest videos. It's great to have you following along and um, keep your comments coming in. I am just as excited to know how you're getting on with your growing seasons if they're getting going or maybe it's just coming to the end of yours if you are over in Australia and New Zealand. But let us know what stage you're at and how things are going for you.